Now, women, of course, have borne the brunt of uh, the impact of COVID-19 at the same time, even buckling, you know, under the pressure financially. And there's been quite a lot uh, of talk around, you know, the pay disparities and how do you close the gap between, uh, you know, women and their female and, and their male counterparts, in fact. And also at the same time, the equality around women in boardrooms and even making sure that some of the businesses that they are running themselves become about wealth generation as opposed to being just a about living from hand to mouth. Let's talk about someone who, of course, is moving to change that, and that's Melissa Mutienyu, who is Grasa Michelle's trust CEO and joins us in studio. Of course, one of the topics that is, you know, very close to many people's hearts is what we're talking about tonight. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Let's talk about, you know, leadership and, and influence. Let's start then. Why innovation? Why is it important for us to have this discussion around the empowerment of women? Thank you, and thank you so much for having me. I think when we look at women's economic advancement in particular, you know, there is a lot of inequality uh, that is costing the continent. Uh, quite frankly, it's costing us about $95 billion a year. That is what it, it costs in terms of the exclusion of having women outside of the political space, outside of the economic space and the social spaces. So. In effect, we need to look at various strategies at getting women into those spaces. At the Grasha Michelle Trust, we are specifically targeting women's economic inequality. And we're doing that because there's vast evidence that shows that if you focus on economic advancement of women, it tends to have ripple effects on the family unit and the community unit. Research shows that women will spend up to 90% of their income on expenses related to health, mm -hmm. education, etc. Mm -hmm. The question, of course, becomes then how do we get there? How do we economically empower women in Africa at scale? And that's where looking at innovation, looking at leadership, uh, looking at collective action, all of those elements become critical. And, you know, we talk about leadership and, and this is something that is often spoken about as to, you know, when women rise to, the, you know, through the ranks of leadership, when they sit at the table, they must own the table, they must not have the imposter syndrome. But how does this work, though, at a practical level, particularly because sometimes women are faced with odds that are against them as they're trying to climb the ladder? Yeah, absolutely. I think the issue of women's inclusion is one that at the macro level, we all need to be allies. For too long in international development, in the public space, we're talking about mainstreaming gender and mainstreaming women's issues. Very few of us are talking about transformative policies or transformative inclusion. And so that becomes a major challenge, how to shift the narrative. The second piece, as you've touched on, is representation. As a continent, we're doing well. We're doing better than we have in recent years, that's for sure. But there's still a lot of room for improvement. Mm -hmm. We only have 7% heads of state that are women. In terms of the roles that women are holding when it comes to parliamentary seats, about 26%. So there is need for a real push. And that means looking at the policy environment and the ecosystem in which women are, are occupying and, and where they find themselves. As the Grasha Michelle Trust, we recognize that collective action, advocacy influence has to happen at two levels. It has to happen from bottom up and top down. So what we do at the bottom up level is identify change makers from across sectors and in various countries across the continent and equip them with the skills, with the space, with the tools to really advocate for their shared needs uh, and, and essentially engage regulators, private sector players and, and so on. And in that way, we're able to have a footprint across 17 countries, women making a real change when it comes to uh, establishing spaces for themselves in the finance sector, agribusiness and so forth. When you look at top down, that's where strategic influencing comes into play. That's where understanding who the levers in a system are uh, in engaging them effectively. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example of how we've achieved this at the Grasha Michelle Trust. In 2021, Her Excellency Mrs. Michelle convened what we call an expert leaders group of women in finance. And this group comprises women at very senior levels that are essentially advocating and influencing uh, the agenda for women's economic inclusion. Mm. 
It includes women in the central and reserve banks at very senior levels. And so here we have a cadre of influential movers and influencers really positioned to shape the narrative in their space. So you have a strategy of collective action, bottom down, bottom up rather, and then you have a strategy of shifting, shifting the goalposts uh, by in influencing and fostering relationship with and allies at the top. Melissa, there's something you, you and I touched on just earlier on in this conversation, and this is of course around how when you empower women, um, you know, their rand is likely to go towards influence and quite a lot of people around them. But how do we then move from that, just from that particular point of saying that whatever you are getting, you are spending around you, but creating wealth, Absolutely. Um, you know, for the women through the very businesses and the support that you're giving them. Yeah, actually, one of the most viable pathways for for economic advancement for women is promoting women's entrepreneurship. And this makes perfect sense. When you look at the statistics in terms of um, the number of women entrepreneurs in Africa, this rate is increasing more so than anywhere else in the world. You have 27% of adult females in Africa that are engaged in early stage entrepreneurship. That's a massive opportunity, but there are massive barriers uh, to unleashing this potential. As the Grasha Michelle Trust, we're innovating by doing two things. The first is building a critical mass of successful women entrepreneurs. Uh, we've impacted hundreds of women across Africa and we do this through a program called Women Creating Wealth. It goes beyond your traditional technical hard skills and knowledge training programs that you'll see with many women's entrepreneurship programs to look at a mindset shift, shifting the mindset from survivalist and income generation to growth and wealth creation. And that means walking with these women on their journey to help them overcome those societal pressures and norms that they've internalized that yeah. tell them women's place is not in business. It means employing tactics such as personal mastery training, um, such as coaching, such as building a business ecosystem for them and a peer support network. So that's one way that we've innovated around women's entrepreneurship training. And we are seeking to influence 10,000 more women. And, uh, uh, you know, really looking at, at, at this mindset shift that you talk about, you think about how women often, as you say, are survivalistic and that's how they think. I need to get this done so that this, you know, my children can go to school and all of that. But also at the same time, you talk about wealth creation. L let's talk about the movement very briefly uh, between that sur survivalistic mode to really understanding that you can create the wealth to become, you know, for, 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 for generations to come, because as women, that is something that is never drilled down into us. So how do you manage to then achieve that? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's a multifaceted approach. It means one, exposing women to other women entrepreneurs that have made it and understanding what solutions worked for them. It's about ensuring that the right types of mentors and coaches are placed before these women and that they build those meaningful relationships. But critically, it's about removing some of the key regulatory barriers and addressing the issue of access to finance. Too many women entrepreneurs are too accustomed to going to a bank to ask for resourcing and being turned down. And, you know, that's a market failure, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that's a responsibility for a lot more actors to address. It's about financial institutions not seeing women as, as being um, bankable because we don't tend to own land. We don't tend to own the properties that we're residing in. Those are, you know, male inheritance laws um, and also spousal ownership yeah. gets in the way of African women being able to go to a bank and access resources. So if your doors are being closed to you from financial institutions who should be the ones that can prop you up and take your business to the next level, it's very difficult to break out of that mold of survivalists. So beyond the skills building, we need the ecosystem to improve as well. What an important conversation to have. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank I you. do appreciate it. Of course, as you talk about the breaking of uh, those barriers, it happens, uh, you know, one woman at a time. And thank you so much uh, for coming through. That's uh, Melissa Mugenyi, who is the Grasa Michelle's trust CEO, talking about a very important, um, you know, conversation around leadership and the empowerment of women on that.